Margaret awoke, startled, a cold sweat clinging to her. She gathered her thoughts. Aged wood creaked, echoing through the quiet rooms. Near the house stood a shrine to Rhea Dana, goddess and daughter of the land, of Rhea and a being of comfort. Margaret sought answers. But the goddess did not speak. There was only the faint whisper of something dark something hungry. The old seer's bones felt the weight of their age as she climbed. The only thought on her mind, has it begun again? John's mission would be a simple one. He was to investigate Rhea's greatest shrine. His mother presented him with a fresh divinity shard. From his brother came a newly sharpened sword. His wife gave him a kiss, and his daughter's hugs were full of reason to return home safe. Rhea, a land long forgotten, a place of unimaginable beauty. It first appeared as sludge given life, slithering creatures, small and vile. Oh! <laughs> 
wall, impeding further progress. A battle was certain. Vanished by light itself, the corruption abated, leaving the shard cold in hand, dark in need of life. softly from the harnessed energy. The shard grew warm, humming softly from the harnessed energy. Before him was now one more dangerous than those that came before. Goblins, a familiar threat, albeit farther out than usual. Magnificent, but dangerous, a land of love found and of love lost. Before him, was sacred ground, left untouched in days gone by.
Remaining calm and collected, the shock of his heart skipping beats was concealed in expert fashion. Before him stood Linda, his eldest daughter, with bow and quiver at the ready, determined to do her part. Before the Guardians were not beasts feeding, but monsters consuming, destroying others, they corrupted and distorted, creating even more hungry husks. Both father and daughter gathered their thoughts, their hearts heavier than before. How would they explain what they had witnessed? The ancient tree had been cut down. Together, father and daughter described the horror, the creatures, dripping with decay that slithered into bodies stuck between life and death to bolster their ranks. Grandma Margaret confirmed what they all feared. It was the corruption, a cruel entity spoken of only with hushed voices, an ocean of darkness that flowed from the top of Mount Morta. And the Bergson's duty was to stand against this devouring deluge of death. Kevin was also eager to do his part in the family's fight, especially when his older brother Mark was off somewhere. He was as much a guardian of their mountain home as any of them. She stood. If they were to reach the summit and destroy this evil, as the Bergsons of old had done in the past, they would need the assistance of the sanctuary. Given to the Bergsons by Rhea herself, the sanctuary was a gateway to the mysterious lands around the mountain. 
Margaret pointed to the huge crystal at the center of the den, revealing their next task. To activate it and open the way to the source of the corruption. And once Rhea's three spirits are gathered on the grounds, the only gate to the top of Mount Morta will open in this chamber. By himself, or with the assistance of those who loved him, John needed to gather the three spirits from their lands. Without them, he would not be able to stem the flow of the corruption. Halls of Anayadaya must be here, or she needs to be found. Celestial shard chipped directly from the ancient crystal in the sanctuary. It would be the Berkson's lifeline, a tether to pull them back home before death's fateful whisper. Filling the winding tunnels of the silk-covered caves, the acrid taste of poison lingered in the air. Spiders. Linda told herself it was only target practice. As she readied her bow, they must find the spirit deep within the caves.
energy flowed around the room. Before the hero, an object of the divine. In front of the hero, an object of divine energies.
love, truly a divine emotion, especially during dark days. Love had motivated this mother to lay down her life for her cub. Eight eyes studied the one so willing to walk into their own tomb. and began to slip away, wondering if this was death. It was warmer than they expected. They gasped for air as the celestial shard brought them back, a sensation no hero could become accustomed to. As she heard John and Linda describe their foray, thoughts rushed through Margaret's head. The corruption had amplified the creature's wickedness, and no longer were they part of the harmony of the Rhea. With the new threats looming, Margaret asked Ben to prepare his workshop. He would have to take charge of enhancing the warrior family's weapons and armor. Although in the safety of the Bergson's house, the young cub was not yet free from danger. Exhaustion racked the animal's body, its chest heaving for even the smallest of breaths. The family believed several plants found deep in the nearby caves, combined together, could serve to remedy the situation.
local Ben reached out to the familiar warmth of the forge. If they were to reach the top of Mount Mortar, their equipment would need to be of the highest quality. Everyone was encouraged to take part in a game of destiny. A prize awaited the fortuitous, but there was only pain for the unfortunate. 